Are you looking for a travel trailer under 25 feet long? Well, stick around. We found three awesome floor plans that measure up. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time seeing us on YouTube, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing. And if you don't know, we also have our website called rvblogger.com, which is full of helpful articles all about RVing as well. And if that's not enough, we invite you to join our private Facebook group called RV Camping for Newbies, where you can jump in, talk to other RVers, ask all kinds of questions, have a great time, maybe even run into me and Susan in the group, because we are in there from time to time as well. But without any further ado, let's get started with our review of awesome travel trailers that are less than 25 feet long. This travel trailer is the Highland Ridge Range Light Air, model number 17BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,840 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,155 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,995 pounds. It measures in at 20 feet 7 inches long, and it can sleep up to 6 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, that's where the owner's bedroom is located. Then it wraps on around to the dinette. Across from the dinette is where the kitchen is located. And then back here towards the rear of the camper, you have bunk beds and the bathroom behind me. So here I am just inside the entry door. And like I mentioned, the bedroom area is off to the right hand side. Now up top here, you'll notice we've got these really long cabinet doors with lots of storage overhead. Down below that, we have a couple of overhead lights. And then you've got your bed. And on my right-hand side here is where the TV is located. Now, this is on a nice swivel arm, so you can watch TV while you're lying in bed. Or you can just swivel it out a bit, and you'll be able to see it from the dinette as well. At the head of the bed, we have a cup holder on one side. And I'll get this curtain out of the way. We have a tower of power on the other side, so you can charge in all your electronics and all that good stuff. And then you have your emergency exit window, which you can also open and close for ventilation because it is screened. Now, as far as the bed itself goes, this bed is uh, about 54 inches wide and 80 inches long. So um, not quite a queen size bed, whatever the one size down from that is, that's what size, size this bed is. Full size is what Susan says. I just can never remember that stuff. Anyway, that is a pretty good bed setup. Also under the bed, you'll notice that there's a big storage open area under there. So you could, I don't know, slide the dog kennel under there. Everybody could kick their shoes under there, however you would like to use it. Now, just next to the bed is where the dinette is located. We put the dinette in the down position in here just so I could show you what size bed it is. Um, but I would say one, one child could probably sleep on here pretty comfortably. It's about 5 feet 9 inches by about 34 inches. So like I said, one person could sleep on here. I really don't think more than two people would be comfortable eating at this dinette. Uh, but it certainly serves its purpose as well. And then above that, we have a nice oversized window, a couple of lights up top here, and then more storage overhead. So just across from the dinette is where the kitchen area is located. This is what we call an inline kitchen. Everything from the sink to the refrigerator is just in one line. It's a very efficient uh, kitchen setup. Now you'll notice here that we have a single bowl sink with a gooseneck faucet and a sprayer that's built into there. In my opinion, this sink is really a little on the small side. It would be very difficult to wash your dishes in there. But I do like the fact that they did take the two burner range and turn it sideways to give you as much countertop space as possible. So that's a really good feature. In addition to that, there's storage underneath of the kitchen sink. And there's also a utility drawer or utensil drawer, as well as a larger deep drawer for pots and pans. Now, over top of your two burner stove, you've got a convection microwave oven in here, which is very nice. That way you can microwave or you can bake things uh, all in one oven. So it saves a lot of space that way. And then you have additional storage in this cabinet. 
Now there is one thing that I want to share with you guys in this camper uh, that you should be aware of when you're looking for campers. And that's the type of hinges that are used on the cabinet doors. These types of hinges are called exterior mounted hinges. They probably have a different name for all you carpenters that are out there. You can correct me in the comments down below. But an exterior mounted hinge just means you can see the outside of the hinge on the face of the cabinet. The problem with these style hinges is that over time they will need adjustment or if, if anybody hangs on them like those long cabinet doors over top of the bed, you can bend those hinges or they can pull out from the screws. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of when you're looking for a camper. That could be a little problem that you'll have to correct somewhere down the road. Now in the rest of the kitchen here, once we pass the cooktop and the convection microwave, we have a really great size refrigerator in here. And then above that, it does have a separate freezer as well. Now this is not a 12 volt fridge, so this would run on propane or shore power. And so it's a little bit smaller in the inside because of that, but nonetheless, it's a very good size fridge and freezer for this size camper. One last feature in the kitchen is that there is another drawer down below the refrigerator for even more storage space. So here we are at the bunk beds in this camper, and just to get a quick measurement on them for you, they are about 28 inches wide and 75 inches long. So decent size. The sleeping capacity on each of them is 300 pounds. So an adult could sleep on either one of these bunks. A couple things we look for with bunk beds are, do they have a window? Do they have a light and do they have receptacles and USB ports? And I'm happy to say that for both of these bunks, they have all of those features. Up top here, you'll notice it's got its own window, light and receptacle and USBs. Same thing down below. Now this bottom bunk has a great feature because there's an exterior door on the side of this camper. The bunk flips up and then you can store things in this area while you're traveling. So if you have a bicycle or chairs or taller items that you need to store in here, this gives you a lot of flexibility for that storage. So here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower like I usually am. And the ceiling height in the shower area in here is about six feet, five inches. So a good amount of headroom inside of here. Now the shower in here is a pretty good size and feel for a shower. I think you could comfortably shower in here without hitting the walls and all that stuff. It does come with a shower curtain, but you guys know I would take this thing out. I'd call Rep, Rec Pro and order a, a, you know, a retractable shower door for 65 or 80 bucks or something like that. Um, certainly makes sense to me. Anyway, in the rest of the bathroom, very nice setup. You've got a big medicine cabinet up here with plenty of storage space inside. Down below that, you've got a very good size vanity sink and plenty of countertop space. And then below that, we have storage below the sink and below the countertop space as well. So here I am on the commode and with the door closed, it's kind of a tight fit on this side. I mean, I'm right up against the door. On the other side though, I have plenty of elbow room. This travel trailer is the Winnebago Micro Mini model number 1808 FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,760 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,240 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,000 pounds. It measures in at 20 feet even and it can sleep up to three people. You walk into this travel trailer at the back end of it and when you first walk in the door, you'll notice the entertainment area. Also, the bathroom is located there. You wrap on around and you have your dinette, kitchen area across from that, and then right behind me here at the very front of the trailer is where your bed is located. So here I am just inside the entry door, and as I mentioned, the entertainment center is right next to me here. This is where your TV is located. And, you know, there's not a lot of great places to hang a TV in this camper, so I guess if it's here, you'd be able to see it from one half of your dinette, and certainly if you're laying in bed at night, you would be able to look here and see the TV, but I think it would be kind of far away. Anyway, below that, you've got some really big storage cabinet space and another set of cabinets with a lot of storage down below that too. Now, just next to the entertainment center across from me is where the bathroom is located, but we'll hit that last in the tour. First, we're gonna take a look at the kitchen. And the first thing you'll notice is they put a gigantic 
sink in here. This is a big, deep, single bowl sink, which I love. My only complaint about it is this is probably too big of a sink for this camper because there's no countertop space. Oh wait, maybe there is. We've got a little extender counter down here, but it does block the doorway. Uh, but if you're in here cooking and you need the space, you can use your ex extend a countertop space for that. Now over here we have a three burner range. Um, and then above that, you've got a microwave and it's also a convection oven because there's no oven below the cooktop in here. Over top of the sink, you've got a really big spacious storage cabinet. And then your sink itself, I forgot to mention, it's got a gooseneck faucet and a sprayer that's attached to it. And then below that, you've got some storage under your sink. You've got all these drawers for kitchen utensils and whatnot. And then finally, we have a couple drawers under the cooktop. Really nice big drawers for plenty of pots and pan storage. And then you have all of your fuses and all that stuff located below here. The refrigerator is located right next to the microwave and the cooktop, and it's a good size fridge for this trailer. It's really a large size. This runs off of propane or shore power, so it's one of the older style fridges that, in my opinion, they take a little longer to get cold. You might have to, I know in our case, we have a fridge like this in our Class C. We actually have to plug it in to shore power the night before we're going to go away. And that way the fridge gets cold overnight and then in the morning we can load stuff in from our house into the refrigerator because it'll be nice and cold at that point. Uh, if our kids come over to borrow it, they're not so lucky. They have to keep their stuff in a cooler till the fridge cools off on its own. Anyway, next to the refrigerator, there is a couple of cabinets here. Now you can use these as pantry cabinets or just use the bottom one as a pantry cabinet. And then up top they do have a small bar so you could also use this as a wardrobe cabinet. You just pull this shelf out very, very easily. So here I am at the dinette in here, and uh, I would say four people could sit at this dinette very comfortably. The padded seats in here are very thick and comfortable, so it feels pretty nice. I like the fact that it's got this big window over top. You can turn on your dinette light right over top of your table. You also have a USB and also a C port. Uh, over top of your table as well. So if you're working or, you know, whatever, catching up on the news, you got your computer open, you can charge it right here at the table. Now, there's also some storage down here and both dinette booth seats have storage all the way under them. What I like is they do have these doors on the front. So stuff that you store under here, but you use more often, you just keep it closer to the door. You can also pick up the pillows and pull up the dinette bench to reach even more storage back further underneath the dinette booth. Now this whole entire dinette is built into a slide out. So it does slide out a couple of feet, maybe about two and a half. And that helps to open up and give you some more floor space inside this camper. Now this dinette does have a fairly large step up to get into the dinette. It's about 12 inches, which I'm not a big fan of having to step up into a dinette. When you do that, the first thing you recognize is that, man, there's not a lot of headspace here. You could bang your head on this thing. And, um, but one thing I do like about it is that instead of having carpet in here, they do have linoleum on the floor. So if you spill food under here, you know, no big deal. You just clean it up. Finally, here I am at the front of the trailer, which is where your bed is located. And a couple nice features here. First of all, you've got storage all the way across the top. Nice big storage cabinetry there for all your clothes and stuff. There's a window on each side of the bed so you can get some cross ventilation in here. This side is the head of the bed. So there's a USB and a C port there and then a little cargo net. So if you wanna charge your phone or whatever, you can plug it in and pop it in the cargo net and it stays out of the way while you're sleeping. Of this bed it does run east to west instead of north and south so that's a nice feature that some folks really like but somebody's always got to climb over the other to get out of bed at night and go to the bathroom now the width of this mattress is 60 inches wide and oh boy really maybe 74 inches long so it's definitely a short queen no doubt about that you could probably get you could probably get up to a 78 inch mattress in here. They left it kind of short for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Um, and then your mattress will just run wall to wall to give you some extra space.
One other feature about the bed in here is that there is storage underneath of it. But I want to show you one thing. Anytime you're looking at a camper and it's got these tight corners like this, pay attention to that because like this door doesn't fully open because it hits the doorknob on this storage door. So not a big deal because you still have pretty good access in there, but you don't have full access. I've seen some corners uh, that are much worse. Just something for you to keep an eye out for when you're looking to buy yourself a new camper. So here I am standing in this shower in the bathroom as usual. And this is the perfect scenario for making the point or the case against having a sink in your bathroom. I think it would be much better to take this shower, which is way too small. I mean, there's just no way I could ever take a shower in here. And uh, if you got rid of the sink in here, you could make the shower much bigger and make this a much more usable shower. But this shower is literally, I don't know, man, maybe 24 by less than 24. You have to have a curtain that goes around this track. I mean, you would be squished in here. I think you'd have water everywhere. It would be very uncomfortable taking a shower in here. I'm not even going to measure it. I'm so not happy about it. Anyway, outside of the shower, <laughs> you have this medicine cabinet with some nice storage space in there. There is a small towel rack on the wall here. Good size sink in the corner of the vanity and then some storage down below your vanity sink. And finally, here I am sitting on the commode. Elbow test not so great that way, but it's perfectly fine if I lift my arm into the shower. This travel trailer is the Forest River Nobo model number 20.4. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,733 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of a very impressive 2,817 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 7,550 pounds. It measures in at 23 feet, nine inches long, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll notice where the sofa and Murphy bed are located. We then wrap around to where the dinette is located. The kitchen is also in the center of this camper. And then behind me in the rear of the camper is where the bathroom is located. Now here I am just walking in through the entry door into this camper. And my first impression of it is, wow, this is really pretty cool. I mean, it's got this Murphy bed set up to the right of me with the couch location. And then to the left to me, this is a real eye catcher, but it's got this raised bar. So we have a two tier countertop and then it's got these taller bar stools here. So what a really, really neat setup. In addition, there's accent lighting underneath as well. Now, as I mentioned, we've got this comfy couch right here. And when you sit into it, it's, it is really pretty darn comfortable. I'm, it sinks in a little bit, but it's really just right. The back seems to tilt back at the right angle. So you could be very, very comfortable sitting here and relaxing. Now the Murphy bed is also located behind the couch. So this is a very multifunctional setup. Let's throw these pillows up here and I'll show you how the Murphy bed works. First of all, the sofa just jackknifes out. You just give it a little lift and lay it down. There's a little hook right here. You just pull that out and lower your bed platform and then you just pull your mattress right down. Now the mattress on here has a comforter on top, so it would kind of be like a fitted sheet and everything stays in place just fine. You'll also notice towards the head of the bed, there's a big window over top, there's a shelf over top, and then there's a cubby space down below, so you have lots of storage. You also have a reading light on each side of the bed. And then in addition to that, you've got a wardrobe cabinet on each side of the bed as well. And these are actually lighted wardrobe cabinets. So very, very nice little extra feature there. Also on each side, there are receptacles, two USB ports, and then a really nice big end table or nightstand. So if you have a CPAP machine, you have plenty of space for that. Or if you need to charge your phone, tablet, computer, you can put them right next to your bed at night when you're sleeping or next to your sofa when you're reclining. Let's do a quick measurement of the bed in here. It is 60 inches wide by 80 inches long. So we have a full residential style queen size bed. The one end table or nightstand closest to the entry door also has storage underneath of it. And underneath of your sofa, there are two storage areas with cargo netting to hold things in place. 
Now, as we wrap around past the sofa and Murphy bed, we come to the dinette area. And one reason this camper feels so large inside is because the dinette is in a slide out. So this slides out about three feet. It gives you a lot of extra floor space in here. Now the dinette can comfortably seat four people. And you'll also notice that there's a window at each end of it and a large window over top of the table. So you get plenty of airflow in here. There's also a light overhead to light everything up. Now this table does drop down so that this dinette does convert into a bed. And when you convert it, you're gonna have about, I don't know, five feet, 10 inches by <clears throat> about 40 inches of space. So I would say a smaller adult or a child would be able to sleep here pretty comfortably. You'll also note that you can remove the cushions to access the storage under the dinette booths, or you can just open the doors on the end. Now, I really like the feel of this kitchen. It's an L-shaped kitchen, which gives you extra countertop space. And then what they did in here is they actually added a second level of countertop to raise it up a bit so that they could fit the bar stools on the other side of the countertop. Really, really a smart setup for a couple of reasons. Number one, it gives you extra seating in here. It's a very convenient place to sit and eat a quick meal, but it's also located so that you can easily see where the TV is mounted in here also. Uh, if you're sitting on the dinette, you may or may not be able to see it, but if you're on the couch or in bed or sitting at the bar stools, you have a great view of your TV. Now the sink in here is a large round single bowl sink, very deep. This is a great size sink, nice little faucet over top. And then you've got all this counter uh, space off to the right hand side. It does come with a three burner stove. And then down below that is where they've mounted the convection microwave oven. Down below the kitchen sink, there's also additional storage space and there's more storage space above the cooktop and kitchen countertops. And these are really nice cabinet doors. They have like a glass inset. So it just makes it look a little bit nicer in here. It gives you a really nice residential feel. Now, one thing you'll notice about this kitchen is that there are no drawers. There's no place for your utensils or anything like that. And we actually had the same exact situation in our class CRV. And what we did is we bought what's called a hide a drawer, I think is the right name for it. And it mounts underneath of your dinette table. And then you just slide the drawer out. Now, the only thing you have to be aware of is when you move the table to convert the dinette into a bed, you've got to remove the hide a drawer first or all your utensils could go flying everywhere. Trust me, I almost made that mistake myself. So here we are at the refrigerator, which is at the end of the kitchen. Now this refrigerator is mounted really high up. I mean, it goes almost to the ceiling of this camper. Susan said she would need a stool just to be able to reach the freezer. Now that's a plus and a minus in my opinion, right? If you've got kids running around and you don't want them to have access to the popsicles on demand, at least they're nice and safe up here, but it's a big disadvantage if I want Susan to pour me a scotch on the rocks. She may have a hard time getting the ice out of the freezer. But anyway, it's a good size freezer, terrific size refrigerator for this size camper. It is a 12 volt fridge, which means it'll run on shore power or battery power. It's a compressor style fridge, so it'll get colder much, much faster. Uh, down below that, you have your fuse panel, and that's why they mounted the refrigerator up so high. Now, just across from the refrigerator is where your entertainment area is located. They have a nice decent sized TV on the wall here. You could actually go a little bigger than this, I think. Um, but all the rough-ins are located here and the backers are installed so you can hang your TV here. There's also some countertop space and then additional storage down below. One last feature about the entertainment center is at the very bottom of the side of the cabinet, there is a central vac. So you can just sweep your crumbs right on in there. Now, here I am in the bathroom, standing in the shower as always. And I will say this is a really nice size bathroom in here because it runs the whole entire width of the back of this camper. Now, the shower in here, I'm standing in the, under the skylight area, which covers just about the whole shower ceiling. You know, you've got about six feet, eight inches of headroom in here, which is really, really fantastic, especially for all of you taller campers. Now, there is a bit of a step up to get in here 
and it looks to be about 12 or 13 inches. So for you folks with bad knees, you know, a little bit of a step up to get into this shower. Now the shower curtain that's in here, you know I don't like curtains, but this one is on a upper and a lower track, so it'll stay in place and it won't blow in on you. And the upper track actually curves out into the bathroom to pull the shower curtain out and away from you. The rest of the bathrooms are great size. You've got a medicine cabinet here with storage inside and, some, and outside below the mirror door. Then you have a small vanity sink with some storage down below. So now Susan and I have switched sides. She's standing in the shower and I'm out here in the rest of the bathroom. And this has a lot of storage in it. This big cabinet is built in here. And on one side, you've got a wardrobe cabinet with a built-in safe down at the bottom, very nice feature. And then you have drawers on this side of the closet space for additional storage. And then down below, there's even a couple more drawers for you to store things. Now here I am sitting on the commode and you know, as far as the elbow test goes, you know, we're in really pretty good shape in here. I'm kind of banging my elbow on the left side a little bit, but it's nice and spacious. I don't feel cramped at all. One last thing to note, this is the weirdest place we've ever seen a switch for the bathroom lights. It's on the side of the vanity and um, very curious location, but there's a pocket door in this wall. So they couldn't put the switch on the wall. The shower's on that side. They couldn't put the switch there. So I guess they just went ahead and decided to mount it on the side of the vanity. Now that you've seen all these awesome travel trailers that are under 25 feet long, there's only three things left to do. One of them is give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Next, we hope you'll smash that subscribe button so that every week you'll be notified when Susan and I put out a brand new video. And finally, if you wanna check out some more travel trailers that are on the smaller side, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.